Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the code and some data for the ARMA, or Auto Regressive Moving Average Model. Now the good news is there won't be a ton of new stuff in this video since we've had uh, videos on code behind the AR model and code behind the MA model. So this is more just how do you put them together and build a full ARMA model. So as in a previous video, we'll be looking at this catfish sales data. This is all just reading in the data. You can refer to some previous videos if you want details on this. So the data looks like this. We've subsetted the data from 2000 January until 2004 January. So we have these four years of data where each year is separated by these gray dashed lines. I've also drawn the mean of these four years, so the average in red dashed line horizontally. And I've done that because it shows that there is somewhat of an upwards trend. We see that in the first two years, uh, the average of these first two years is lower than the total average, and the average of these next two years is clearly higher. So we see that this data may not be stationary. So just in case, we're going to go ahead and take the first difference and try to coerce stationarity, where again, that means taking the difference between a data point and the data point right before it. Then it looks like this, which looks definitely more stationary. So we see the first difference is centered around zero, and we don't see any systematic growth in the data as we saw before. So as before, we're going to take the ACF, the autocorrelation function, and PACF, or the partial autocorrelation function, and see if we can get a starting point for which orders we should set for the autoregressive and moving average part of our ARMA model. First, here's the ACF. So based on the ACF, I would say we can start with the MA1 process because we see the lag at 1 is pretty strong. And then for 2, it kind of shuts off. It is true that for 3 and 4, they're kind of high, but maybe we can just start with MA1 for now. So we're going to use moving average 1. What about the autoregressive part? So that comes from the PACF. If I look at the PACF, I see that the lag at 1, 2, 3, 4 here is actually the strongest in terms of just the first couple lags. We see that there are pretty strong lags out here around 11 and 12. And this 12 is particularly interesting because 12 months is a year, so this indicates a possible seasonal pattern. But we'll explore that more in the Sarima video where we look at seasonality. In this case, we're going to just say that, hey, we're just going to assume there's no seasonality here, even though there is, and we'll just start with a AR4 process. So in total, we're going to be using an ARMA 4-1, where 4 is the order of the AR and 1 is the order of the MA. So actually fitting it is pretty much the same as our previous videos. We're going to get a training and testing set. So we're going to test on the last six months of data and train on the first three and a half years. Fitting the ARMA model is pretty simple. We use the ARMA function, which comes from the statsmodels.timeseriesanalysis.arima model. We can import ARMA. So this lets us do a pretty easy ARMA model. And as said, we're going to use order 4.1. We go ahead and fit that model. And here's the part I want to look at for a bit, the summary of results. So the main part I want to look at is this table here. This tells us about the values of our coefficients and whether or not they're significant. So we see here are the four autoregressive coefficients at lag 1, lag 2, lag 3, lag 4. Their values are all negative, which indicates that the value of the time series at the current period is negatively correlated with the lag 1, lag 2, lag 3, and lag 4 version of the time series. We see that the moving average, since we used only order 1, we have that coefficient right here, and this is positive. We also have a constant here, but if we go ahead and look at the p-values, which is this p greater than absolute value of z, remember this tells us how significant this coefficient is in our model, and we want this value generally to be small, something like 0.05 or less. We see that all of our AR and MA coefficients are below that threshold, so we're going to keep all of them because they have significant predictive power but the constant is well above 0.05, so we don't include a constant in our model. So our final model looks like this. If we want to predict the time series at any point, we're going to use this function of previous lags and the previous innovation. And where are these numbers coming from? For example, this negative 0.87 is coming from right here, because that's the coefficient of the autoregressive lag one, and the others come similarly. So let's go ahead and predict and see how good or bad our predictions are. So we're going to go ahead and predict on the test set. And this is our residuals. We see that they're somewhat centered around zero. They're definitely growing to more absolute extreme values. That's something to watch out for. If we look at the predicted versus actual values, we see that pros and cons, right? It is mirroring the general shape of the first difference of the data. So we're kind of predicting the shape correctly. But there is quite a bit of gap here that we should be able to correct for. 
And that gap is because we haven't yet reached our final model for this time series. This is just the ARMA model video. When we look at the Sarima model, we'll be able to capture seasonality and get an even better prediction. So if we just look at a single metric of error, we see the root main squared is about 2000, which is not great, I would say. So the main key points I wanted to get across in this video are how to use ACF and PACF to inform what order you should use for the ARMA model, how do you go ahead and fit the ARMA model, how do you look at the coefficients and see if they should be kept or not, and then write your final model, do a prediction, and then look at whether the prediction is good or not. So as I've been saying in this video, the next thing we'll look at is the Sarima model to make this even better. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next time.